the definition of sanity that's generally implicitly held among the psychological community is probably too individualistic. And what I mean by that is that I don't think that sanity is something that you have in your head. It's not part of your psyche. It's not part of you exactly. It's more like harmonious interaction with the hierarchy of social, um, of social arrangements that you have with other people. So, well, imagine this, for example, I, I, a, a neighbor I knew on my street said to me once, you're never any happier than your most unhappy child. <laughs> right, so that's a good one. But so you imagine, well, you're a pretty sane person and you're married and your marriage is terrible. It's like, well, then you're not yeah. that sane, are you? And if you have yeah. a terrible marriage and you're not getting along with your kids, then you're also not very sane. And if you're if you're in a terrible marriage and you don't get along with your kids and you're fighting with your siblings and your parents, then you're even less sane. And so you imagine that sanity, <laughs> you're sane if you have a relationship that's working, if you have a relationship with your family that's working, if that family is nested inside a community that isn't too fractious. You know, and there's something yeah. musical about it. It's like every note yeah. has its place. And so- I think, yeah. You, you see what I mean? And, and it's also- I, I see what- yeah, well, I see what you mean, but I, if I can give some pushback, I would say that like the person that has the miserable marriage and unhappy kids, but is still seemingly happy, that person is insane to me. The is, person that has unhappy kids in an unhappy marriage and is unhappy is sane. Yes, he, that's exactly that is, my, well, that's exactly the point I'm making is that, okay. yes, okay. because the thing is, is that if you aren't reflecting the structure of the social yes. communities around you, then you're off calibration. Yes. Well, here, I was talking to yes. a woman named Jean Twenge yesterday, and she's a research psychologist. We were talking about self-esteem. And one of the, uh, the self-esteem movement in the school system in California was absolutely dreadfully devastating and appalling. It basically mm. posited that you could teach kids how to be narcissistic to overcome their negative emotion and neuroticism. And that's so preposterously appalling that you couldn't invent something stupider. So we were yeah. talking about self-esteem, whatever the hell that means, because it's a very badly defined term. But here's one way of determining whether you have the appropriate amount of self-esteem. You might say, well, everyone should feel good about themselves. It's like, well, if you're a miserable, ratty, lying, deceptive, narcissistic prick, then probably you shouldn't feel that good about yourself. And how do you know that? Because you should feel about as good about yourself as people on average do around you about you, right? Yes. So you're, and we even know this technically because you have a little counter, so to speak, yes. in your psyche that ranks you in terms of your social standing. And the higher you're ranked, the less negative emotion you feel and the more positive emotion you feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's because yeah, your yeah. brain is indicating to you that you're well situated in a social community and yeah. you're secure with opportunity. And so your yeah. self esteem should, that's exactly how it works. It's a very, yeah. so what happens to people who get depressed, technically depressed, is that yeah. that counter goes astray and they start thinking less of themselves than yeah. their situation would indicate. Yeah. And so then everything around them falls apart. They feel that their past was a catastrophe. They feel that their present is hopeless and that the future isn't going anywhere. But it's because this really, really low level counter that utilizes serotonin has gone astray. And sometimes antidepressants can help deal with that. Now that's yeah. not someone, that isn't someone who has a terrible life. That's someone who has a good life, but something's gone wrong with them psychophysiologically often, so the counter is out of whack. In any case, you should have about as much self-esteem as other people are willing to grant you. And that's kind of a conservative idea as well in some real sense. Enough self-esteem as others are willing to grant you. I, yeah, I it's like, know. well, imagine, you know, it, if everybody in the company assumes that you're an average performer... Mm -hmm. You should probably assume that you're an average performer. You shouldn't be running around feeling good about yourself in excess of that because your attitude towards yourself should be a reflection of your actual situation in the social environment. So my pushback on that would be, um, 
if your self-esteem is defined by how the people around you treat you, how can you break out yeah. when you're in an, well, especially look. when you're in an industry of, of narcissists that are really only concerned with how they're doing, what they want, I, like how, how do you separate yourself? Th that, that's a great question, man. And that's, that's the, that's the trick that, that well, well, presents itself the to everyone maybe, creative. But the answer maybe is, <laughs> and this is, I don't, I don't know if we support this, but this might be the truth. There is a reason why narcissists tend to break out because their self-esteem is not limited by the views of others. That, that is, that is true. That is exactly true. 